Good evening, everyone. Um, thanks for coming to this conversation, uh, reflecting on the program France Caraïbe, the MPIC program as we refer to it here at the UWI, uh, Masters in Politics and International Cooperation, a program that um, involves a tripartite agreement, um, the University of the West Indies Mona, Sciences Po Bordeaux, and uh, l'Université des Antilles et de la Guyenne. Uh, a program that started some nine years ago in 2007, and so we would have had a number of students from um, across the Caribbean, the French-speaking Caribbean, the English-speaking Caribbean, and of course, mainland France, who would have participated in this program, uh, traveling um, among the three campuses, um, therefore garnering a wide range of experience. And so uh, this afternoon, we're going to try to uh, just tease out a bit of the experiences that you'd have had. We have represented at least three cohorts here. Uh, we have people from the first, the very first cohort, uh, people from the, the, the current cohort um, at UA. So uh, it should make for a fascinating discussion. Uh, and we're basically going to try to keep it as conversational uh, as possible. And so we will start out by getting to know each other a bit. Uh, I'll ask you to just, well, introduce yourselves, say uh, what country um, you're from, the years that you'd have spent in the program so far, uh, well, what your current um, activity is, whether you're still in the program or what are your professional activities subsequent to the program and what, where do you see your career um, going after this? Uh, we've started out in English. Mais si vous préférez de vous exprimer en français, vous êtes le, les bienvenus aussi. Um, so I am Fanny Garcia from Guadeloupe, French West Indies, and I am currently in my fourth year of the program in UE. So we are full-time student in uh, MPIC, and that's it. And next, I want to be an environmental lobbyist. My name is Renée Lloyd. Um, I joined the program in uh, 2008. I spent five years in the program, and I've since left university. I work at currently work at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade of Jamaica, and uh, specifically in the department uh, that specializes in Caribbean and Latin American affairs, and um, essentially regional integration in this this part of the world. Good evening, everyone. I joined the program in 2007. It was the first uh, cohort of the program. Well, uh, after uh, my five years in the program, uh, first I did uh, internships uh, in the Caribbean for two years uh, in Jamaica. I did uh, an internship in the United Nations Environment Program in Kingston. And then I did an internship in the Organization of American States uh, also in Kingston. Then I went back to France. I worked in an NGO for six months. And then I got a scholarship uh, to start a PhD. So I, I decided to specialize uh, in, politi in political science. And I am uh, doing a PhD about uh, women and politics in the Caribbean. Good evening, everyone. My name is Hanif Miller. And just like Swazik, I started a program in 2007 um, I'm currently working at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, and I work in the Department of Diaspora and Consular Affairs, where I assist Jamaicans abroad with uh, many consular issues, and also to, to reach out to the diaspora and how they can help Jamaican their development. Um, I'm Marika. Uh, I, I joined the program in the sixth, um, sixth year six cohorts and the same as Fanny. So I'm currently studying at UE in uh, the MPIC program and I spent two years in Bordeaux and one year in Martinique so far. I'm Jean-Pierre.
Murray. I started the program in 2009, so I'd have been in the third cohort, um, just after Renee. Uh, since uh, completing the program, I uh, have been working with the Department of Government at, at UWI teaching um, international relations. And I've recently been accepted to um, pursue a PhD in um, global governance and uh, human security. So that is where I expect to be uh, come September. All right, so then we've seen uh, that we have represented uh, different courts uh, and, of course, um, different countries um, from. So we have the, the French Caribbean represented, we have uh, mainland France represented, and, of course, we have uh, Jamaica represented. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have any other territories represented um, uh, in the discussion this afternoon, but we have had students from um, other English-speaking um, Caribbean territories as well, at least two from um, Barbados, if memory serves me well. Uh, the program is one that involves a lot of traveling, uh, a lot of cultural exchanges, um, intermingling with uh, international students and so on. So I want to get an idea of what has this uh, experience been like in terms of being a part of this diverse group, uh, being among international students for a period of at least four years. How has this influenced your own self-awareness, cultural awareness, openness, or tolerance? Um, for me, um, in 2007, when I started the program, it's in terms of I didn't know what to expect because it was the start of the program. So I went with an open mind, and I'm glad I did because I, <laughs> I learned so much, you know, from being, because the first year we were, we were all in Bordeaux, and I guess we were all a bit nervous because the program had just started. I think we still didn't know where it was going, but we know that we wanted to be a part of this program, including, uh, I think there was five of us, two of us from Jamaica, five from mainland France, and three, around three from Guadeloupe, if, no, Martinique, if my memory serves me correctly. And, you know, we, we I think we quickly um, form a bond, and I think that helped us because we from Jamaica who weren't as fluent in the language, I think this bond that we, we, we created, it helped us to transition into the society very well. So I think have, having an open mind was, uh, was, our, was one of the criteria for, for me personally to transition because France, as with Jamaica, the culturally it is very different. The food is different. The way of life is different. Even how the university is structured is different because you're coming from a campus where you have a lot of space, it's huge, and you're going to a university where it just everything is in one building. So that was it was a bit different. But uh, also life outside of campus was interesting because we were living on hall. Halls of residence, which is not the same halls of re the same type of residence that we have here, where you have that camaraderie and you have that togetherness. You know, you're basically on a hall, but sometimes you not even know who your um, neighbors are. You know, so that was a, a it was different for me. But I think it also enriched my outlook because being at Sciences Po, it opened my opportunity to see students from different walks of life, not only from France, but even from Africa, um, from other European countries. And, you know, that helped us to realize that, you know, it's really a global village. And it really helped you to realize that, you know, we're all there for a purpose, you know, no matter where you're from. But once you apply yourself, no matter where you are, you can, you can succeed. I think I have to agree with uh, with what Hanifa said, and especially touch on uh, what he said towards the end uh, in terms of um, uh, being able to engage with um, cultures out even outside of French culture. I found that what was very impactful for me was not so much um, um, having a one-on-one -on -one experience with France and European cultures because to an extent um, being an English-speaking Caribbean we have a, a certain awareness of 
European culture, having come from a uh, British colonial past, and it wasn't something very foreign or alien to me going there for the first time. But what I really did appreciate um, was interacting with the large African community, the large um, Muslim community. Those are things that in Jamaica we don't have that prior experience and don't really have an opportunity to engage with um, in our daily life. I know that France has the highest Muslim population in all of Europe, um, and that for me, I made many friends and um, outside of a culture and a religion that I've ever been able to interact with, and that was an eye-opener to Africa and um, the Middle East for me. But, but what would you say, you mentioned being exposed to these cultures and so on that you would not have um, had prior knowledge of, but what would you say that has done for you having had that kind of exposure? I think definitely um, deepened my understanding of how uh, other persons think deepening my understanding of the fact that it's okay if other persons think differently from you. Um, I don't know, I guess it just increases my respect for the other person, um, regardless of whether I'm familiar with their beliefs or not, with their cultural background or not, with what their society is going through or not. I think I've learned to appreciate much more how they are part of the fabric of just humanity and that our world is not just those in the English-speaking world or those in the... Uh, in the Western world, you know, outside of North America, the Caribbean, and Europe, there is Asia, there is Africa, and they're huge, and you know, there's more than us going on in the planet. The change for you was trans, but the change really happened for us. I think for Marika and I, like now this year, because it was really different. Like we have a Barbadian girl with us, and uh, but she's so nice and quiet that we didn't realize the difference between the culture before arriving in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was a huge difference. And yes, I definitely agree because we are really different, but like how a group created like a family and like I really gained a lot of maturity this year and it's really good for this, I think. But can, can I ask though, I, I, what I noticed, for example, for some of the um, students in my cohort from the French Antilles that uh, sometimes they also had, you know, mainland France was, yes. was still different for them and that they still had to go through that process of uh, yeah. fitting in and so on. Did you notice? Uh, Completely. Like, I, okay, I really don't feel, think I am French to the extent that I feel like I'm Guadeloupian and when you arrive in France it's really difficult because everything is really different even though we all speak French I like we don't party the same way we don't listen to the same music we don't eat the same food and it was yes it was really complicated but you do think like you have to fit in but here you can be yourself and then you can, I don't know, discover something. It's different from France and Jamaica. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe I can add that uh, when I joined the program, I did not know anything about the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when I joined the program, I was part of the Bordeaux Institute of Political Science. Okay. And well, uh, for the little story in the beginning, I wanted to join the program with the United Kingdom, but they didn't accept me. So I found out about the Fun Caribbean program and I was wondering, oh, it looks fun, so let's try it. <laughs> but honestly, um, when I finished the program, I didn't regret it because um, it was a very good experience for me. You, uh, I got to know an area, the Caribbean, I didn't know at all. And uh, as a French student, when I went to Martinique, well, Martinique was different from Bordeaux. But when I went to Kingston, it was really different uh, from Bordeaux. <laughs> so, you know, you learn, uh, you, you learn a new culture. As uh, Hanif and uh, Rene said, you have to adapt uh, to the Caribbean way of life. Mm -hmm. Some things I like, uh, some things uh, I like less. Mm -hmm. For example, in the Caribbean, I don't understand uh, why people can't be on time. As a <laughs> French person, <laughs> it is very strange for me to understand that, but I just try to get used to it. And um, yeah, uh, what I really liked about the program 
was to meet uh, people, you know, from uh, the different um, countries in the Caribbean. Yes, I agree with everything you said. And uh, I think for the people from mainland France, it's, it's more progressive, the adaptation, because we start in France and then we go to Martinique, which is kind of the same. They speak French, they have the same kind of way of life, even if some things are different. Mm -hmm. But because people from other countries arrived in France the first year, we were already aware of what kind of um, cultural differences we could expect from the program. So it was a s slow adaptation. Mm -hmm. And then that's true that it's different here in Jamaica. But as uh, René said, um, it's interesting because we also have the um, other culture we are not very familiar with when we are in France, for example. Like, we realize that Jamaica is very influenced from uh, by the United States, which is not the it's less the case in Europe. And also we met people from uh, Latin America, which is also interesting and different culture too. So um, we, we learn from the Caribbean countries, but we also learn from other culture, which is very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's fascinating to note, for example, that for Swazik, that uh, she started out with this being a region that you know, she didn't know at all, uh, to the, the experience in the program having shaping um, well, the direction of her life subsequent to that, you know, her interest, because, you know, she's currently back here um, studying mm -hmm. uh, the Caribbean in, in greater detail. Um, and as, as you mentioned, Marika, the, the idea of meeting different people, even coming to the Caribbean and meeting people from um, Latin America, that, that's one of the interesting things about the program um, for me, that you really have three campuses that are multicultural, multinational. You come to the UWI and you have people from all across the Caribbean, but from North America and um, uh, Latin America as well. In Martinique, it's the same because it was in Martinique that I was meeting people from St. Lucia, Dominica, just the yeah. same. So mm -hmm. you're still meeting people from the Anglophone Caribbean and, mm -hmm. and, and elsewhere. And then, of course, Bordeaux is a university city. So once again, you're meeting people from Russia, China, Japan, mm -hmm. everywhere. So I, I think in terms of that, it, it increases the cosmopolitan view that you, know, you, could, you could have the world really if you appreciate that. And of course, what better context to study um, international relations in. Yeah. Um, some of you have already touched on well, you know, the, the differences in, in society, but I want to probe that a little bit more in terms of uh, what was it like um, moving from society to society, because even as you pointed out, the French Caribbean and, and mainland France, they're still the similar societies, but with differences. What was that like? Um, well, one, you, didn't, you never spent two consecutive years in the same space. So being uprooted from one society and, and, and placed in another society year after year. First, it's an investment like in money and time and organization. Honestly, uh, I was a baby and when I first came into PFC, but when you have to travel every year, find the flat, find the budget, work, etc., you really have to, like, yeah, be grow up, yeah, I guess, up, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And but the good thing is that you're never alone. Like we are six in our here, and that's really good. I think it's a really good thing of the program that we are never alone. You can always ask, and we also are really accompanied, well accompanied, yeah. So that's a good thing. And I don't know, like, in terms of differences, I think the best and the, the most difficult was definitely Jamaica, but it was also the most interesting because, okay, I come from Guadeloupe, so Martinique wasn't really a di discover for me. Yeah, and France was difficult because it was me, but it wasn't me. So, yeah, to that extent, I really like Jamaica. Mm -hmm. I think it made it interesting. It kept things interesting. Went to the first year to France, then to Martinique, then back to France, and finally home to Jamaica. And my family kept asking me, where am I going next? Where am I now? That's but um, it was it was good. That first year for me in France was very difficult because, it's well, primarily because of the language barrier and I would say secondly because I was the only one coming from UE 
which was a sort of unique experience. I was the only person representing the English Caribbean. And so I went there and everybody else spoke French and you know, was getting along and it was hard and it was hard for my courses and I wasn't getting the research that I needed to get done because I couldn't read the material without a dictionary every two words. And so that first year was really um, a year of growth. Um, and uh, after that, I was mentally and emotionally exhausted. But I felt like the second year in Martinique, it was good for me to not be in France that year and to go to Martinique and to get that time to really improve my French. Um, I went back to France I in uh, after that, speaking almost fluently. Everybody was shocked. They wondered what had happened in Martinique over that year. And it was a good time for me to solidify the lessons I had started learning in France um, in, a, in an environment that was uh, more uh, familiar. I mean, it wasn't 100% familiar because it was a French-speaking Caribbean, but I did feel to an extent that I had come back home because, I mean, we're, we're still in the same region. I was back into my climate. Um, every people looked and acted th the way that I was accustomed to. And so that was, it was good. I think the progression of it went well went back to France um, for the master's cycle, uh, far more prepared, um, ready to hit the ground running, knowing what I would be expected to do, what the standards were like at Sciences Po. And so I think that um, how it set up um, with, the, with the movement had really um, helped and facilitated my progress. Well, uh, as Fanny and Rene mentioned, it's true that when you change a uh, country every year, you don't have time to get bored, even if you spend uh, <laughs> Even if you spend uh, three years in Bordeaux, you know it is not three years in a row. Yeah. Right. It is uh, one year in Bordeaux every two years. Uh. So mm -hmm. even Bordeaux, you can't get bored of Bordeaux. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, I think that uh, my most difficult year was in Martinique because I was part of the first uh, cohort. Yeah. Well, for me, Bordeaux wasn't that exciting because, I mean, I'm <laughs> French. <laughs> <laughs> even if Bordeaux, I think, is uh, one of the best cities in France. Yeah. So. It's great uh, to enjoy uh, the French life lifestyle in Bordeaux. <laughs> and uh, like uh, Fanny, uh, Jamaica was definitely my best year of the program because uh, I discovered really a culture that I didn't know anything about. And everything was different for me. Uh, well, um, the food, the, the parties, um, the university. It was really a complete uh, discovery. And uh, I liked uh, Jamaica so much uh, that uh, after I graduated from Sciences Po, I decided to spend uh, one more year in Jamaica to do uh, internships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now I am back to Jamaica again <laughs> 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 to do some uh, research uh, work um, for my PhD. Mm -hmm. And also I think the program, you know, it made me want to discover uh, other Caribbean countries that I didn't know. Yeah. Uh, for example, last year uh, for my PhD, I went to Guadeloupe. Mm -hmm. And uh, contrary to Martinique, I really enjoyed uh, Guadeloupe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it is also because I think I grew up and uh, the conditions were really different. Yeah, yeah. As, as you comment on, on the, um, well, the differences in society and so mm -hmm. on, um, I, I, I recall that in the year that um, your cohort would have been in, in Martinique, that it was the year that they had the Glev. Mm -hmm. And then so what was that experience like? How did, how did that compare to... Um, uh, well, what you'd be used to in Jamaica or what you maybe mm -hmm. saw in, in, in France in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, the, the manifestation and, and, and things like that that, that that took place. It was great because you didn't have school for almost a month. <laughs> so that was, that, no, that was really good, you know. It was, it was, it was a, but I think when you look at it, the, that year of the strike, what we had, um, it, we actually partake in, in, in a strike. I still have the, um, the T-shirt at home, you know. Uh, and I, every time I look at it, I say, "Wow, I was involved in a in a in a in a strike." And I say, "Wow, this is is cool." But it thought it, it it taught me that you know, no, is you felt like that year we all felt like we were Martinicans, you know. I think even Guadeloupe they had their strike as well, but you all f we all felt like we were Martinique. And I think it, even though there there were difficulties in Martinique, I think if I were to look back on it, apart from my fourth year in France, and of course, obviously Jamaica. I think Martinique, that's a year that really marked me the most in, se in the sense of the grave. But also, I find that in Martinique, I felt that I met 
because I had the opportunity to meet Patrick Shamwazo, who is a, a great um, literary icon in the French-speaking world, you know? And, you know, we did book like Edward Gleason, and, you know, I'm saying, wow, yeah, these men, I remember Patrick Shamazo coming to class in front of me and talking, and I'm saying, but this is Patrick Shamazo, you know? And we felt like we were the, we, we were envied in a sense because all the, the Martinican came and they were outside and we were inside with Patrick Shamazo, and they said, wow, this is cool, you know? So it, it, those experiences that we have had, and I think even though, as, as Swazik said, because we were in the first year together, the, the same cohort, yes. um, cohort is in the sense, even though it, 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 it we felt like we were, as we go along, we're finding our way, we also had a lot of privileges because we, we were invited regularly to um to Justin Daniel who is the who is the he, the he heads a program in Martinique to his home and stuff like that because there's stuff that we didn't know and he would have to intervene and I think this is a part of his way of making us feeling welcome in 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 Martinique because I remember one year we had I think we our boards didn't come the particular month and Andre and I we didn't have any money and he gave us money you know and and I said, wow, this is just, this is cool, you know, yeah, you have food and you have, you have money. But I think also in the grave, what we remembered, because there was also a shortage of food. Yes. And we had to, we had to fool together, put it that way, I put it nicely, so that we all could eat. Because the supermarkets were running out and they were closing at certain times of the day. Luckily, I had a, a St. Lucian friend and she sent for food over by her by St. Lucia so that we could get food. Yeah, it was, it was, it was fun, but it was also was, was serious, you know? <laughs> so in terms of that, but um, in terms of most difficult though, I think that first year in France would have definitely been the, the most difficult for me in, in terms, and I think it was because of the language barrier. Even though you did French before, it's, you know, being thrust into a society where just everything is in French is like you get a rude awakening. Yes. And I don't think we, I don't think we were, were were prepared for that, and because the fourth year taught me that we weren't prepared. Because the fourth year was it, it, was, it, a lot it, it was it was very e it was a lot easier when you get used to the science for method, and that is another thing I think was was different because the way of writing essays and saying uh, essays are essay man, yeah, come on. But you film time, you felt as if the the form is more important than the content, and you know so. Um, that, that was some getting used to, yeah. you know, but over a period of time you realize that I think it helped me now in terms of structuring my ideas. Yeah. I, 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 when you're doing essays now, it, that, that format that you learned at Sciences Po comes in very handy. So even though it was more the most difficult, I think I'm glad for it because it's made me the person, it's, it has made me the person I am today. Uh, uh, Marika, even as, as you respond, uh, mm. well, you and Fanny would have been here. This uh, this year, when Jamaica had their uh, major general elections, um, mm -hmm. I, maybe I'll ask you to comment on that as well. You know, what was that like in terms of how we campaign for elections in Jamaica as opposed to how elections are done um, in, in, in France? Um? Yeah, it was interesting because th it's different from France. Um, that's true that in the campus we didn't we didn't notice it that it was elections, mm -hmm. but then we mm, traveled to Port Antonio weekend like i think the weekend before the elections oh or something right. like that and like a meeting was um, holding and i think the um, prime minister was there so it was interesting to see everybody with the colors like the whole year in the street the whole week the whole day in the street in the sorry street, yeah. and uh, everybody in color and then the meeting with a lot of people and it was very interesting and then we were shocked because people told us there is no class the day of the election there is no class maybe the day before the election and don't go in the streets just the day of the election because it's very dangerous or it can be violent or there is a lot of people or a lot of traffic and so we are not used to it because in France it's different like election day is a regular, regular day. day yes. So um, we it was a different experience but yes. it was interesting. Um, uh, and about the precedent question, um, yes, in adaptation. Yes, um, what Fanny said about the fact that we were all together and as a group, it was, and yeah, the solidarity everybody pointed out, yes. 
it's true that it helps to um, to be more integrated or to be more to not to feel alone in a, in a country you don't know. Um, we also had the strikes when we were at Mar in Martinique, mm. and it was the strikes at the university itself. So okay. we didn't have class for a month too or something like that, but several weeks because of the strike. And um, so it was an experience in Martinique. Okay. Um, well, and the thing, the thing is like when you travel to different countries with different culture, you, you it makes me, it makes you think, think about your own country and to question some of the of the culture of your country, why do we do we do that? And like, it's not everything is not normal, and everything is not it's not what we are used to in France. Is the way it has to be. So it's interesting to notice things that we think are like that. And um, um, I think some of the thing that is uh, different is the administration. Like in France, we always complain about administration. It's long. It takes a lot of time and everything. But then you relativize. You relativize. You can say that you. You think it's not. It's not as bad as it yeah, is in when France. You when you, compare, you go to Martinique, yeah. you compare. You say no, it's it's far better in France. And then you go to Jamaica, and it's even worse. So <laughs> yeah, yes, it's it's interesting to to notice yeah. these little things. Yeah, sure. I, I'm just going to ask you in well in, in your closing comments uh, to, to to comment on really what has this experience, how what is the impact that this overall experience has had on you uh, in terms of well your life in general, professional life, uh, social, etc. Uh, and, and how do you see this helping you in terms of how you will maybe work in the region or contribute to the development of the, of the region subsequently? Uh, the program had an impact on my uh, professional goals. Yeah. Because uh, as I said earlier, uh, when I joined the program, I didn't know anything about the Caribbean. And uh, if you had asked me eight years ago what I would be doing now, I wouldn't say uh, I would be doing a PhD about uh, women politicians in the Caribbean. Well, also in the beginning, I have to say that uh, when I joined the program, I wanted to work uh, in international corporations. But then uh, I changed my mind until I had the opportunity to get a scholarship uh, to do the PhD. Mm -hmm. I decided um, to go for the PhD uh, instead. But after the PhD, we never know what might happen. Maybe I will come back to international cooperation, uh, which was the goal of the program uh, in 2007. Okay. Oh, yes, because maybe something uh, we can add is that uh, when I joined the program, we all had to study international cooperation. But uh, over the years, now the students, uh, they have been given the choice uh, to the choose a master's. Uh, which gives uh, more freedom for the professional uh, goals, uh, I think. And um, of course, um, on a more personal uh, side, I developed uh, long-term friendships uh, during uh, those five years um, of the program. Yeah. I mean, with uh, my classmates inside uh, my cohort, but also uh, with the cohorts um, after me. 
For example, when I came back to Jamaica for my PhD, I remember I sent a message to Fanny, and I told her I would love to meet uh, the guys in Jamaica now, and we linked up uh, very quickly. So you know, I think the program can really yeah, work as a network. Yes, definitely. Yeah, so everyone uh, will be willing to help each other, uh, personally, but also maybe later uh, professionally. So I think it's also an important uh, network. And by the way, I think that uh, they are starting to build a young professional uh, associations inside uh, the, the French Caribbean program. But maybe the girls uh, currently in Jamaica can tell more about it. Okay, it's an initiative from the Seven Scott, and they're trying to build like the alumni networking. Okay. So I think it's going to be good in following years, but for now it's just a project. Yeah, but that would be a great opportunity for in, in yeah. terms of how we can contribute later on to the region, definitely. But it's still true that we already have like the network of PFC, like we. As she said, like we meet regularly, and we also like um, see the different court who are in Bordeaux yes. at the time, so you can ask questions, etc. And that's really good. But yeah, concerning your question, honestly, I don't know for now. But like I come from Guadeloupe, so it was an opportunity from the beginning. Um, I think my takeaway from the program has been well, uh, has been multiple, but the two big takeaways from for me uh, in terms of my trajectory. Um, the first was uh, academic slash professional. The, the, the material that I studied over the five years gave me the tools I needed to qualify to um, work at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and to do the work that I'm doing now. It's a... Uh, uh the program is, is solid in its material, it's varied, and it is 100% applicable if you want to pursue a career with an international focus. Um, I work in the government now, and I uh, um, help the government you know, in my little part of my job to conduct its international affairs, which requires an understanding of how the world works, how countries work, how cultures work, and how other people think, and I think I had a good opportunity to grasp some of that through the lessons and through the experience, uh, multicultural experience overseas. On another note, I, uh, another big takeaway for me has been, um, I think, uh, the language part of it. Um, so we didn't go to France to learn a language. Many people have asked me about um, they, they have the impression that I went to France to pursue a degree in French, and you know I've explained to them over and over that it's a political science degree, but yes, it was taught in French. But that was um, a major takeaway, um, you know, achieving a master of a, a foreign language. And for me, I had been studying French through high school, and um, I came to university and studied it, studied, uh, did some French courses. Um, but it really was more from an academic point of view. Um, but when I was forced to learn it now, um, to the point of almost fluency, it really ignited a passion in me for learning languages. I saw how you know, you know, knowing another language really helped you to connect with other people. It you know communicates to them that you understand stand a part of who they are and that you have made an effort to to bridge that gap between you and the other person. And it really has driven me to learn other languages. I've spent the last three years taking Spanish. Um, last year, I traveled to Korea for three months on a course to learn Korean. And I don't intend to stop there. I mean, I would love to learn other languages. And it really started from, from learning French on the program. Okay. Um, I think for me, um, I'll start with, unlike um, Rene, for me, coming to this program, was what attracted me to the program was actually French. I never cared too much about political science um, initially, <laughs> to be honest. It's really French that really drove me to the program. And uh, when uh, I got the opportunity, I realized that I couldn't just do f well in French alone because the degree wasn't in French, so I had to do well in, in political science. So over the period, I actually developed a love for 
for international relations and political science and well it tells now because of a job where I'm where I'm at now, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. But it's it was really French and um that has that passion hasn't hasn't died because I have gone on to do my Delph exam, the C two exams and stuff like that. And I and I actually teach French now. So is my love for French it it, it it it's it no no bounds in, in that sense. Um however um, as it relates to the second part of your question, which is um, the, the other takeaway I, I get from it, 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 it helps me now in my, in my work, even though I don't directly, because I deal with consular and diaspora in the, in the ministry, which is consular is something that I've never done prior to coming to the ministry. And uh, even though it is in the in the realms of international relation, I think consular is something that you have to learn when you're in it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think you can learn consular from a classroom because when you consular, you can deal with an issue with somebody needing a passport, to fishermen being lost at sea, to somebody who's stranded, and you just and the cases are not similar. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes there are some differences, and you have based off of those differences, you how you treat them or treat with them, it will it will be different. So. So being in that department has taught me something that I've never done before. But so, but sorry, do you think that the, the program would have given you the tools to be able to readily to be readily um, adapt to that to that new? Um Definitely, because when I remember those grant tools that I had to do at um, at Sciences Po, it sometimes you just get a one word and you have to develop an essay or you have to develop some something around it. I think in the whole idea of being prepared, you know, realizing that what can I use to, what can I draw on to fix this particular situation? And I remember being at Sciences Po and I remember in the exams where you had this, they give you a one word and you're supposed to, you know, tell a story and I'm saying, but I don't know. But what I had to do is draw on my experience that I had in Jamaica and over the program and, uh, well, apparently it worked because I passed. But, you know, and the same thing here now with consular. You, you learn because there are steps and guidelines, but sometimes cases are never the same. So there's always something new to learn. So that, that sense of having an open mind to what you're dealing with, I w that I honed when I was at Sciences Po has helped me in my current um, job. Um, but it, it was a wonderful program, and I hope that it will continue for many years to come. We will c be celebrating um, decades after decades, you know, several anniversaries, because I think it's a wonderful program to really to bring people together, to bring students together, realizing that you can achieve, and you can achieve um, great stuff, even when the, the stuff is not taught, it's taught in your mother tongue. I've, I've heard themes of transformation, of resilience, of growth, that um, the experience has been one that has caused those of us who started the programs as, as babies to grow up, um, to learn to do things on our own, but certainly to adapt, moving from um, one, one territory to the next, from one um, way of teaching and learning to the next. And that, that's certainly something that has served those of us who have left the program, and that will definitely serve um, those who are still in the program and who will be seeking um, employment afterwards. Um, a very uh, rich program in terms of the, the um, academic aspect of it because um, you you get you are being taught by the the, the, the foremost scholars um, in, in the areas that, that that you're studying but also because it opens us up to, to um, various um, cultural differences uh, to and of course as, as um, you would have mentioned as well there's the, the aspect of the language English for those coming from uh, the French territories and certainly French for those of us coming from the Anglophone territories that even though you didn't leave to do to study foreign languages that um, at the end of it you leave with uh, fluency or relative fluency um, and, and I think that that is something that is certainly marketable uh, and so the program is one that um, well hopefully as Hanif said will continue to, to contribute to not only the scholarship in the region but also exchanges and I mean, I, I suppose it should be even more important as we look now to what is happening with the um, French territories um, in the Eastern Caribbean and, and 
the prospects of greater integration with, with the Anglophone mm -hmm. um, Caribbean, that, that, that our program could certainly play uh, a more, a more uh, important role in, in that process as well. All right. Uh, th thank you for, for coming and sharing in the discussion.